What is good internet? It is Spirit of Paradox here and welcome back to another video. And in this video we are going to be covering Ultimate Wolverine vs the Hulk issue number 5. And in this issue, Ultimate Wolverine fights a panda and we get an explanation to Ultimate Wolverine's survival factor. So if you guys are fans of the Ultimate Universe, this is the channel you want to be on. We cover both the original and the new Ultimate Universe on the channel, so make sure you drop a like and subscribe. Let's begin. The story begins with Ultimate Wolverine in a green field, naked and just wandering about. But we don't know why he's here. But then... Something from behind Ultimate Wolverine tries to get his attention. Ahem. Hmm? And then Wolverine turns around and finds out it's a panda bear. And he says, Hi. Howdy. How is it going? Says the panda bear. It's going fine. How about you? Meh. Where am I? A bamboo field. Why don't I have any clothes on? Clothes are overrated. This isn't really happening, is it? You're dreaming. But it doesn't mean it isn't happening. Uh-huh. So, who the hell are you? Well, I'm your spirit animal. Wolverine begins to laugh at the panda. What? You're a panda. So? I think there's been a mix-up, Ping Ping. Trust me. Right now, there's a ballerina telling a Wolverine the same thing in her dream. You think your spirit animal is a Wolverine? I don't believe in spirit animals because I ain't a fruitcake. But if I did, fuck yeah, mine is a Wolverine. But the ultimate panda claps back at Wolverine. Well, you're wrong. Wolverines aren't interested in being spirit animals. They're too busy gnashing their teeth and stuff. So yours is me, and I am a panda. Oh, I get it. You're like my kinder, gentler side. My cuddly inner self that never gets to come out on account of me or not getting enough hugs. I'm not cuddly. Sure you are. Take it back. No. Take it back. Or what? I'll get angry. And you won't like me when I'm angry. And I don't like you now, cuddly. The ultimate panda and Wolverine start to fight, but the panda tries to communicate to Wolverine as they do so. I want you to listen to me. This is very important. But Wolverine says, Okay, okay, but first I gotta ask you, what's black and white and red all over? What? You, says Wolverine. Listen to me, you and Banner, this is between both of you now. It's personal, understand? Man to man. What the fuck, says Wolverine. Don't tell them about him and the girl, and whatever you do, don't tell them what you heard them say to her. Tell who? The people. Who cut your head off. Boom. Ultimate Wolverine wakes up in a room of darkness. But he then realizes Ultimate Nick Fury is in the room with him. Mm. Fury? Morning. Where am I? The Triskelin. Prism compound. Wh How'd I get here? We brought you. But then Wolverine looks at Fury and asks him, So, where's my body? 
as we get a time frame on which Logan loses his head, and now we see it on a table with two appliances next to it, Fury adds, your body is in an undisclosed location. Can I have it back? That depends. Can I have it back, please? No. How'd you know I wouldn't die if you cut my head off? Because. Because why? Because we know lots of things about you. In fact, we know everything about you. Huh. That blow-up doll in my closet is for research. Your lungs are seven floors above us. Do you know how you're breathing right now? Magic, says Wolverine. But no, you're breathing through your skin. And get this, we put your head in a depressurized room, a vacuum with no oxygen at all, and you still didn't die. Your brain just shut off, went into stasis. It got me thinking, Maybe your mutation isn't about healing at all. It's about surviving. And Wolverine, continuing not to give a crap, says, Will you scratch my nose for me? Why? So you can bite my finger off? At least you'll get it right back after I swallow. But Fury with his negotiation. Tell you what. I'll not only scratch your nose, but I'll stick your head on back with the rest of you. What's the catch? The catch, Logan? Is you tell me what the fuck happened in Tibet. Wolverine tells him most of what happened, but because of his dream, he knows Wagwan with fury and knows he can't be trusted. I found Banner. He threw me through a wall, we fought in the snow, he ripped me in half, everything went black, you woke me up, and now I'm ahead. And that's it? That's it? Sure you're not leaving out the good parts? Like what? Like the part where Betty Ross showed up. I got no idea what you're talking about. We know she was there, Logan. We know that she used a highly experimental serum on herself. And we know she jumped out of a jet and arrived at your location. Sorry, Winky. Like I said, everything went black. We have reason to believe Ross engaged Banner. And what reason's that? There was seismic activity in the Himalayas, 8.9 on the Richter scale. Avalanche is reported as far as 15 miles away. Any of this ring a bell? Maybe. I'd remember better if you hadn't dropped a bomb on me. But then Fury catches on to what Wolverine said. If everything went black, how do you remember me dropping a bomb on you? I guess I woke up for that part. And Fury tells Wolverine, I had to take a shot at Banner while I knew where he was. Nothing personal. The nuke. How'd it feel? And then we see how Wolverine experienced the nuke as he was burnt to his skeleton. And he just says, warm. I need you to tell me what they said to each other. Who gives a fuck what they said to each other? You blew them up. They're gone. I blew you up, and you're not gone. Tell me, Logan. Are you protecting him for some insane reason? No. Then tell me. What did they say to each other? I don't know. Everything went fucking black. And then we see... Fury pull out a gun, like this, and then he fires it. Oh, Nicky, you one-eyed fucking rat bastard. You wanna know what they said to each other? As we see, 
As Fury has shot Wolverine in the head, everything has gone black. You want to know what I overheard while I was sticking my damn waist back on? Betty break Hulk's heart. Now Hulk break Betty. You want to know what he said to her after he chucked her like she was a freaking javelin? Well, Nick, what if I told you this, you fucking cue ball? Because even though they thought they had their privacy... I saw the whole damn thing, and I still ain't sure whether there was fighting or screwing. But what if I told ya, I saw him smile at her right before we all heard what was coming. The nuke you fired at us. And then, I saw him jump at the rocket like he was going to bite it in half. Well, she said to him, I still love you. And then, he said to her, as the rocket's about to come down on Ultimate Hulk, we don't actually get to see what he said to her directly. And then, boom, the nuke goes off. Ultimate Wolverine awakes in a cell, fully healed with all limbs attached, but his hands have been guarded up with some sort of material, that stops him from unseething his claws. Well, at least they put me back together. Can't make fists in these mitts. No fists, no claws, and no door in here. They must have teleported me in. Smart. But then, Wolverine starts to sniff, and then looks into the toilet. What the hell? And then he says, I can smell you in there. And then we find out, it's actually Ultimate Forged who's popped up out of Wolverine's toilet. Keep your voice down. What the hell are you doing in my crapper? I'm trying to escape, idiot. I'm still in the Trisculin. The prison block of the Trisculin. And if you keep yapping, the audio surveillance sweep is going to hear us talking to each other in about 35 seconds. And how the fuck you know that? asks Wolverine. Because I designed their security, just like how I designed those restrainers on your hands. Just like I designed this tuning fork, which is currently vibrating my molecules fast enough to phase. You're that mutant, the kid who can make anything. What's your name again? Gizmo, Doodad, Forge. Well, Forge, can that fork of yours vibrate fast enough to scramble me up too? Yeah, but why the hell would I want to? Because I'd consider it a personal favour. As we continue, we go to Greenwich Village, and we see that Ultimate Forge and Wolverine have successfully broken out of the Triskelin. Well, I guess this is where you thank me for busting you out and we part ways. Nope, this is where you thank me for not snapping your neck and build me something I need. And Forge just gives him this look like, bruh. What do you need? A few hours later, we go to one of Forge's hideouts. Nice digs. Thanks. Shield found my other lab. This one is for special projects. Like building yourself a friend? Friends are overrated. Couldn't agree more. Can I ask you something? No. You're gonna kill someone with this, aren't you? Yup. I thought you X-Men were all hippy-dippy mutants and humans holding hands and all that. I thought you weren't allowed to kill people. Hmm. I'm working freelance. Okay. This is it. Nothing fancy. You just walk up to whoever your target is and... They're collared. As we see, 
Ultimate Forge using a dummy to demonstrate what the collar does and how Wolverine plans to use this on the Hulk. Ultimate Wolverine asks a good question, and what's to stop him from yanking it off? Well, for starters, it takes the gravity and the inertia of the wearer's resistance and converts them into opposing force. Uh, say that again? But this time pretend I'm an angry mutant with claws in his hands who hates fucking maths. No one's going to yank it off. I made it to withstand 81 billion tons of pressure. 81 billion tons is what the moon weighs, so unless whoever you're slapping this on can lift the moon, I think it will be enough. And Wolverine gives Forge that look, and Forge is like, please tell me they can't lift the moon. And then Wolverine's cigarette drops out of his mouth, and Forge knows, but Wolverine tries to de-escalate it and is like, nah. Probably not. You sure you don't want me to increase the diameter? If you're dealing with a big guy, it's not going to fit around his neck. That'd be the point, Data. Data? Never figured you for a Star Trek fan. Star Trek is for dorks. I'm talking about the little Chinese kid from Goonies. Okay. You've got your unbreakable collar. Anything else? Yeah, make me another one. A ladies model. His and hers collars, huh? Kinky. Just do it, MacGyver. Fine, fine. So, where are you going anyway? I mean, the further the better, cause, you know, if it doesn't work, and whoever you use it on comes looking for me, I'd kind of like to be, you know, far away. And then we finally find out what Ultimate Hulk said to She-Hulk. Meet me in Casablanca. So that's where Ultimate Wolverine's going. It'll be far away, kid. I'm going to Casablanca. But then we find out, Ultimate Nick Fury was watching the both of them escape from the Triskelin and is watching where Ultimate Wolverine will go to hunt down the Hulk. And then he says, gotcha. And that is where Ultimate Wolverine versus the Hulk issue number 5 ends. So that was Ultimate Wolverine vs. The Hulk issue number 5, and I've got to say, I really do enjoy this issue, but it does have its flaws. What I really did like about this issue is we finally got an explanation to Ultimate Wolverine's survival factor. In Ultimate X-Men, we didn't really get a true answer to his abilities, but it was only in hints and nods towards it. In this story, we actually get to see what his survival factor is capable of, as we see he managed to survive getting ripped in two by the Hulk, from multiple bits of damage, he survived the nuke, and he's also survived getting his leg ripped off by Ultimate Colossus, and he still kept on going. So when it comes down to taking violations, Ultimate Wolverine is definitely the guy. But, I must say, this story had loads of delays, and I mean, it took years for this story to finally conclude, and when it did, I believe it concluded just before or after Ultimatum had dropped. And then in Ultimatum, they violated Wolverine so badly, they even forgot about the survival factor. But other than that, my thing I really did like as well, we did get to see how Ultimate Forge gave 
some technology to Wolverine. I really did want to see more of Ultimate Forge because I think he could have really been a good benefit to the X-Men in this universe. But unfortunately we just don't really get to see him again afterwards. But my gripe when it comes down to this issue and I would say the story as a whole. It's just jumbled when it comes down to the time skips. Like, I don't think the time skips were honestly necessary for this story, and I think it really does hinder the coherence and understanding this story because of it. So that is my gripe when it comes down to this issue and the story as a whole. So, yeah. But for the most part, I really did enjoy this issue. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Did you enjoy the fight between Ultimate Wolverine and the Panda? Did you like the how Ultimate Wolverine's uh, survival factor works in the Ultimate Universe? And did you like this issue in general or not? You know what to do in the comments, folks. So make sure you drop a like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And I will see you in the next one. Take care.